Now, some people might have symptoms that you're unaware of, which might be related to all of the devices that you're exposed to, headaches, dizziness, rashes. Um, so it's also about how you feel if you have uh, symptoms of electrical sensitivity, uh, which are becoming disabling. Um, when you put the phone to your head, you get a headache. People come up to me and say, you know, well, I do a lot of, well, I haven't recently, but you know, you do fairs where you're talking to different people who come up to your table and they say, my leg tingles when that phone is in my pocket. Um, I've had people who I've talked to and when they stopped putting that phone to that body part, it changed uh, the, the pain that was there um, or headaches that they had, as I talked about, you know, from putting the phone to your head. A Wi-Fi has a very irregular signal and the, the Wi-Fi is a different kind of, it's all wireless. However, it has something which for some people, you know, Wi-Fi is what triggers their headaches or their, their symptoms. So, and a lot of people had, gosh, one woman came up to me and the Wi-Fi router was in her daughter's bedroom, her young daughter's bedroom. She was in an apartment and that's where the Wi-Fi router was. She didn't know that it was emitting wireless radiation all the time. So you wanna get your room, your, your bedroom cleaned up first. That's the easy first step. What about wireless ear pods that people, kids use when to listen to music? Um, they're in the gym and this way they have wireless ear pods. What about, what about them? How are they? Throw them out. No, you just, no wireless ear pods. Those are devices which emit radiation, which are in the ears all the time. Um, they actually, some of them work where one is attaching to another one, which is then attaching to the phone. So if you can get an air tube headset or use the phone on speaker, that is what is preferred. Okay. And, and just in your ears all the time, even if it's a low level, that's constant radiation. And just one more thing, when we're in the car, is it even worse? Like if I'm going to be three feet from you and you have your cell phone on, or I'm going to be three feet from you in a car, is it worse to be three feet from you in a car than if we're just sitting outside at a bench? Well, Again, every exposure is different, but yes, it can be because when you're in a car, you're, there's a metal and wireless radiation will reflect, bounce, act differently around metal. It, it, it can't get through the metal. So you can have elevated levels in a car uh, and the radiation can act in unexpected ways. So in a car, you want to have all devices off is the I, best thing to do. When you travel, sorry. Go ahead. I was gonna say when you're traveling in a car, your phone is actually connecting to each new cell tower in its service area. So as you're traveling, the phone is doing these handshakes, these digital handshakes to the new cell tower. And each time that's a peak of radiation. So you don't wanna use a cell phone in a car for that reason as well, in addition to the metal. When you travel um, and you get to the airport and you go through um, baggage check or baggage claim or, or whatever it is where they check you and there's a device you have to walk through and people stand, they put their hands over their head and they spin around and it's like a 3D uh, check to make sure I, whatever, there's nothing on you. They also have an option to be hand padded instead. Um, what do you do? Do you, is that a big deal to avoid that thing where you twist around? Well, I, I always get the hand pat. I've almost missed flights because of that hand pat. So I have to tell you that go early. Um, but I get the hand pat because that is millimeter waves often. In fact, there was a kind that they were using before, which they no longer use really. Um, that was, I think, um, even, you know, even higher frequencies, but go early, get the hand pat, tell them early on. I wear like super comfortable clothes so they can just, you know, there's nothing there that's going to make them. One time I wore jeans and that's not good when they're doing the hand pat because they get all fussy around the zippers, but. Okay, so let's assume 
that um, the country says um, we're going forward, 5G, 6G, we're building towers, and they just go forward. And now it's just every man's got to, every man and woman's got to protect themselves. So it's great. We're going to try to petition. We're going to try to do what we can. But if the things just march along, what are we going to do? Is there devices or their products that I've seen some whole home devices? Some people said get shun, shungite. You know, what from all your research and all the people telling you things, are there products to protect ourselves, our house, our bodies, our phones? So anything that at this point, any products you recommend, any, anything you could advise us on? You know, we don't recommend products, but we don't test them. We don't, we uh, advocate for a primary prevention, which would be fixing the problem. Um, one of one things we are advocating for is that if they're, because we want the government to acknowledge this or governments around the world, you know, how do you even compare products? And there needs to be an acknowledgement that this is an issue so that that things can be compared and looked at. So, you know, to what degree is something actually changing the wave and what, what does that even mean? I mean, all of this needs to be properly tested and we don't actually do that. So we don't have science on that. So we would recommend doing everything in your home as much as possible to reduce, you may need shielding if you live near a tower outside your window. Um, so you're not necessarily saying that all products are bad. You're saying this is not your focus to test the products. You don't really have an answer either way. Right. And we, you know, there's so many products I couldn't even, but it, it's just like a huge issue. I mean, can there be biological frequencies which are wireless, which are not as biologically active? I think uh, some scientists are looking into that, not in a well-funded way by any means by our governments. And that's certainly something that I think companies really should be doing. But the first thing they should be doing is not exposing us to this because also every person's different. So there are people who may not respond to certain kinds of frequencies, but may respond to other frequencies at very low levels. And people who are very sensitive uh, you know, have found that you know, one person says, well, this thing works. And they say, this does not work at all. In fact, I feel worse. So, um, you know, I can't speak either way. So we don't, we don't comment on those actually. And I would I would be careful about a lot of them for sure, because um, there's just not enough research that's been done. So that's the challenge. If yes. someone says, if someone says, um, great, I don't use a cordless phone. I'm totally with you. Um, I just use my house. I don't use a cell phone. I just use my house cordless phone. Are they better off or the same? I'm glad you asked that question. Home cordless phones emit wireless radiation, the same type radio frequency as cell phones. And in fact, the base the, that the, the cradle that the phone goes in, they emit all the time. They can be some of your highest levels that you're exposed to are from your cordless phone. I know it was for me. I had gotten this meter. I walked, I thought I had cleared everything out. I finally got the meter. I bit the bullet, you know, and then I found out that my cordless phone right here next to my computer was emitting so much wireless uh, radiation. So no, you don't want to use a cordless phone. And if you must use a cordless phone, uh, turn it off when not in use, at least. Uh, and don't have that deck base anywhere where you sleep, where you are all the time. And what about electric cars? In other words, is this any different than a regular car? Should I be concerned about wireless radiation in buying an electric car? Well, that, that's a very good question. Um, I would say there's smart things. There's So when we talk about wireless radiation, it's a kind of non-ionizing radiation. And the whole spectrum of non-ionizing radiation is considered not harmful by our government agencies, even though there's thousands of studies showing harm. So another kind of, uh, there's radio frequency, which is wireless. And in your electric cars and your smart cars, there's wireless things and sensors. And there's also magnetic fields from the uh, power, the electricity to the battery 
uh, is going to have these magnetic fields. And there's that's the research has been shown impacts to um, childhood cancer. There are studies on pregnant women. There are studies on oxidative stress and all kinds of research uh, that has found adverse effects at low levels. Those have been published studies. Um, the US government has no limit on exposure. So for cars, they're not violating any rules because there are no rules. So there's no rules to violate when it comes to magnetic fields from the batteries in electric cars. But if you go, you can actually get, did I bring, yeah. Well, you can get a little meter um, for magnetic fields. There's a variety of meters you can use and you can see the levels in the car. And if you're putting a car seat in or your child is regularly sitting, you know, have them sit on the side that doesn't have as high levels. In general, uh, car manufacturers are aware that this is an issue. There's many published studies where they talk about uh, magnetic fields in cars and best practices and how to begin to lower levels, but we're really at the beginning of that. Cars came out, electric cars came out, and now they're starting to try to figure some of that out. There, pe Many people have gotten sick after getting an electric car, a smart car, uh, so a lot of work needs to be done there. I cannot recommend any specific models. I talk to people all the time about this. People write me and they send me all these models they looked at, they got all the meters, they're trying to figure out what to do. Um, it's a real problem. And car manufacturers need to hear from you. Write and, them. And if you um, were gonna buy a car now, would you personally buy an electric car? I'm, you know, it's, it's as we move towards energy efficiency, we need to have hand in hand work on ensuring it is safe for the public in terms of electromagnetic fields. I haven't even talked about motors and I probably won't on this meeting, but there's a, a lot of things where you can, in an attempt to uh, conserve energy or to use cleaner energy, we're actually moving into things that can have other un, you know, unintended consequences from the electromagnetic field. So in a car, um, I'm hanging on to my car right now. I, we're looking and trying to see what to do ourselves, but um, I'm, it's, a, it's a real challenge, actually. Well, so I'm really struggling with this issue. Where would you recommend, do you have a place you recommend people get all their different meters from if they want to get um, meters to yeah. measure any of these fields? Safe living technologies. Um, and did I bring my second meter? To show you the, I didn't, it's in my purse. Um, Safe living technologies is a great company that we um, have partnered with as well. And we have a page on our website. I'm gonna put a link with recommended products. Um, because we also have, I'm putting it in right now. It's at, it's under the uh, get educated tab. So we have links to meters and we have a referral code EHTO5 to get 5% off. And that also gives a donation to Environmental Health Trust. Um, and I really recommend getting a meter if you're interested in this issue, because then you can go around your house and see what you're exposed to. Oh, you found the page, okay. We also have ways that you see there, that's the safe and sound pro meter, which is a, a great meter that we have. And it also can get you some additional information. So there's the acoustometer, there's the safe and sound meter, there's magnetic field meters. So important to know what you're dealing with. And if you're really serious about making changes in your house, you wanna have a meter because then you can see if you really accomplished what you set out to do. So you may think you've turned something off when actually it's still on. This happens like all the time, or there's things in your home you didn't even know were emitting. I went over a friend's house. She has, she's had me over every time, you know, and I hadn't brought my meter over in years actually, since I last kind of cleaned out the house. And it was just, and she said, come over and bring your meter, Theodora. She's got two kids. Well, actually, I'm sorry. Um, 
three. And um, we go into her living room and it is beeping like crazy. And it was the video game console. That video game console that they were not even using was emitting because it was plugged in all the time. And she was like, oh, I wish I'd known that. Um, so some things you have to actually unplug in order to stop them from emitting like video game, many video but, game consoles. Um, tech team, could you click on that Safe Living Technologies website for a second? Um, Deborah, there's, um, they're selling a product I see right here that you wear on your wrist um, at Safe, Safe Living Technologies mm -hmm. um, that you wear on your wrist. Is that, um, is that a good idea? So it tells you all the time on um, whether or not you are exposed to radiation. That's a that's a new product that they just got. It's called like the micro RF detector yeah. and it, it goes off an alarm. It's especially helpful if you're sensitive because you can sort of know when you're in a situation um, that that you you know will will affect you. Um, yeah. Does it get, does it give off some kind of EMF itself though that you're wearing it all the time? No, it's only, um, I'm sure it has a small battery in it. It's, it's not a wireless device. Okay. So that's, uh, that this is something that, would you buy this for yourself? Me? I, I think I would be very interested in something like that. It's brand new. Yeah. Anything that can help. What, what I want is something that I can put on the home. So when people walk in the house, it goes off when they come in with all these devices. Sometimes I'm plucking, you know, the smartwatch, the this, the that from my kids' friends. When they come over, I, I have I have no wireless devices in the home um, or only if it's, you know, urgent. I also have a way they can plug their phone in. By the way, you can plug your phone into an ethernet. I didn't mention this, but you can plug your phone into an ethernet so it doesn't need to use the wireless radiation. So here's some other things that they have. They have these Swiss Shield. Um, they have some more complicated paints and things. I do recommend that you have a building biologist for uh, shielding so that you can ensure that what you're doing is um, actually doing what you intend it to do. Because sometimes, like if you just paint your house with paint, you may not realize that there's something coming in from somewhere else that's being reflected or uh, bounced back. So it's really important to to um, have a have an expert do uh, measurements if you uh, if you are going to do some sorts of shielding. There's okay. bed canopies that some people use around the bed. You have do you have to make sure that you're not having anything coming from underneath. If you're in an apartment and um, any shielding, I just want to caution, just if you do shielding, do get an expert um, to come in and do measurements and, and help you with that. But there's so much you can do without uh, just by swapping out, replacing, and uh, you can decrease your your levels significantly. But if you're in an urban area or if you have a cell tower, you know, nearby, you, you want to get accurate measurements so you can verify, measure and verify if you've made changes.